Good morning, friends. This is your update about what happened the night of Sunday, July 28th. It is now 6.07 a.m. on the 29th. Happy Monday. So here is a one-hour time lapse of the Colby Mountain 2 can. And I tell people, don't worry. At night, when it's a very calm affair, here's our 12-hour time lapse, and you suddenly start seeing bright, bright flashes and big solid white. Excuse me, it went nuts there. And that's probably because they are firing. And that means they put fire in the landscape on purpose. Try to hold 32, which goes up to here, towards the northeast, to the right this way. And this is what you want. You want it to burn well as calm and peaceful like it was last night. We've been listening to the radio, and they said the firing went well everywhere. Just remember, fire looks exaggerated on these nighttime cams. Because white is not only fire, but it's heat and smoke that's hot. And light itself. So the truth of it makes itself known in the morning. Oh, see all the pink? That's the fire's light reflecting off its own smoke. So that went well everywhere that we heard. We also watched. We also watched on the cams. Uh, let's see. The fire move closer and closer to Dale's station. And let's do a 12-hour time lapse of Los Molinos East. For a while, it just sort of looked at nothing. And then it went and pivoted. And we saw it slowly but surely going towards the northwest, towards Dale's, Dale's station, approaching from the southeast. But nice and steady in a very calm and orderly fashion. We saw helicopters working throughout the night. They helped uh, the day shift. Kept making dozer lines all around uh, 36. They had not much to report. They just shuffled their units around, assisted each other, and it was there were very long periods of silence on the radio because not much really happened. Some of the crews are sleeping at Manton, and they will get up and go back to work in the morning. Another one was reported as being pretty tired and spent. But I, like I tell people, light exaggerates the white of infrared. It's light and hot smoke. As soon as the morning light hits it, it's the same view. But you can now see the real story. It just crept along the ground. Pretty low-key. Nobody wants fire to approach their town, but if it does, that's what you want. For it to approach in the cool of a calm night. Or the calm of a cool morning. So, the other things that occurred were pretty pretty standard. We got the mapping plane out at uh, after midnight. They came out with their new maps, and now we can see uh, where the dozer lines are and where they are complete or, and where they are not. So this map, I don't really have much of a, a zoom control here, but uh, to protect Concow, Centerville, Megalia, Nimshu, Lovelock, and all those places um, up to uh, Inskip, there is a dozer line. Alongside 32, which is here in the red. All the pink is where they have those are lines under construction. Under construction, excuse me. So these are complete here and here, all around the moat. Where it says R, completed the road as a line. So these roads that go out to the woods, 32 itself. Got some lines under construction over there. They prepped the road. Fired that last night. We got dozer lines protecting the Jonesville area. 
layer upon layer of Elder Line protecting Butte Meadows and more under construction in the pink. These blue letters are drop points for their helicopter drops, and it's a crying shame that apparently the crews around here never got their dinner and worked 48 solid hours at least without food and fresh water. We must do better. We must do better than that. That is a crying shame. We must recognize the sacrifices of our heroes. I don't know if it was any better elsewhere. But that's all. So, right here, on 32, as it goes north and curves, they have more desert lines under construction. But this road here, prepped and good. As we go north, there's more desert lines under construction over there. Um, up here, this is the Lewis Tehima County line. You can see where 172 meets 36, some desert lines under construction. Contingency group over there. We go to the west, over here at 36. This, this is the road. It's 36, the red here. And we know that uh, what day before yesterday, it, it pushed over 36, and they are working really hard to just circle it and keep that little bubble right where it is, over by the, uh, I think that's uh, the, the ranch area. And they did call around 10 o'clock last night for the evacuation of Dale's station. And see, I think it's the right spot here. There we go. When I'm not zoomed in, it's hard to orient myself. It's not particularly labeled on the map here, but everything is going well. It's just crept over towards it. So you can see they've got lots of dozer lines, dozer lines on top of dozer lines, and line around that little spot, which I think was in skip cameras, if I have to uh, guess. Over there, dozer lines to protect Red Bluff, totally completed all the way down, all the way down. The Hema Los Molinos, completed, completed. Road prepped, desert lines just in case, completed. Everything's looking pretty good down there. Down at Richardson Springs, at Chico, black line from the, uh, what was that big Chico Creek area? I'm going to back up to due east of, I think that's Vena. If I had to guess that's Vena. They should label more things, but this is your general idea. Now, they are really going out of their way to protect places like uh, Mineral and uh, Chester. They are going up deep into the forest to put uh, desert lanes over by the intersection of 36 and 172. But this has been the brightest active spot. You watch it on the Colby cams. Don't worry too much about the brightness during the night if you do your replays. And really wasn't that bad. So if we put on global imagery, we put on shade of relief too, and we turn on the activity, the satellite activity that we had, I think up on the camera here, these were their firing operations. So we take off the satellites and mostly go to global imagery. Let's see, I put in, let's see, there was Butte Meadows. California, which is right here. A little bit difficult to see the words. We can kind of zoom in there. Gives you an idea uh, where we're at. Shade relief that gives you a better idea. Now, over here, you know, there's 32. It's up here up on these ridges. So you can see that they have a lot of. Um, what's what's wonderful? They have a lot of access roads and the logging roads and such. So what the safest way to do things is is you go up to the next road up on the hill. Yeah, it's kind of dangerous to put fire at the base of the hill like a highway. You don't want it to run all the way to the top of a mountain. That could get out of, out of hand. But if you have other roads, they go up towards the top of the hill. We just look at shade relief and you can kind of see. 
You see how there's terrain there? Then that gives them opportunity. So they can go up here, for example, and just walk maybe 20 feet or yard, yards, you know, meters, whatever, down the hill and light the grass or vegetation up to the road. Have a lot of units there. Catch it. Now they say, whoop, okay, Fred, time for you to go. And down here, they light it and the fire will race up the hill. And you see those big flashes up on the cams. And it'll say, oh, great, I packed my bags. I'm going to Canada. I got my visa. Here we, dang it. I guess I'm not going to Canada. I'm stopping right here because there's a lot of, there's a road here with firefighters and everything to burn is already burned off 20 meters down the road already. Oh, man. So once they do one section, they go to the next and they like the next section and they do the next. And you can confirm what they do by doing the different time lapses. One section here, on there, on there, on there. It all went smooth like clockwork, as far as we can tell. On the uh, Colby cam. So it was super calm and nice, excuse me. A perfect opportunity to do it. They hit it with retardant uh, the night before. That was what all those red splashes were. And just in one section at a time, did it really flare up? Excuse me, I just turned on the wrong Colby cam there. Colby Mountain 1, please. Thank you. Do a six hour, for example. One bit at a time, flared up. Don't be scared. Because they have to make it look ugly at night so it looks pretty during the day. And look at it fizzle and peter out. See how the calm lays down after they did that operation? It's because it hit that road and it stopped. A new run stopped. Perfect. They'll probably do more of that throughout the morning. If that had been a runaway fire or something had jumped, hey, the radio would have been all a buzz with it. It was cricket, cricket, cricket. And really calm activity. We saw them uh, load a, a, do a, a dozer onto the back of a pickup. That was really impressive. Uh, I want to know what kind of pickup that is, actually. Whoops, I didn't mean to go hit that back button. But one of the dozers threw a skid. So they got somebody on top of that. I guess we have to do the 12 hour to showcase that. It's on this can. Yep. That may have skipped too many frames, but that was interesting. So they have really prepped the Colby cam. Everything looked good. We saw it slowly and slowly march towards, I don't know what that is. Um, let's go back to Los Molinos cam. Just slowly, slowly, slowly. This is it going to the northwest towards Daily Station. And that's your morning update at 7 o'clock. Um, Action News Now. We'll, uh, we'll try to be there for it. Action News Now is going to record the morning operational update for Hellfire Fire and that is, um, and the other agencies just talking to each other to plan things. And it's not really meant for the public, but it sure will give us. It sure will give us um, an idea of what they're planning today and how things went last night. So we'll just wait for that. In the meantime, we've got the brand new maps from last night. And around 800, what, 0800, they might give us a new acreage update. We know that uh, it's spread, but I don't think it's spread by much. So that's your morning update, guys. Remember to like this if you found it useful. Subscribe and please share the channel page with anybody that you think could benefit from this information. We spread mostly by word of mouth because uh, YouTube's algorithm thinks that we are all entertainers. And we fight that all the time. If we don't show really dramatic footage, we don't. Like homes burning down. Then, well, we're at the bottom of the, uh, of the search results. And it makes it hard for us to reach the people that we try to help.
we have given all of these communities many, many extra hours and days of um, notification, of notice that we have alerted them and said, uh, you'll probably have to evacuate. The, pro the fire will probably reach Shingletown. We'll try, I said, and I was correct. Um, it'll probably go up for your meadows. Get ready for it, and I was correct. People said, is Megalia in danger? I said, yes, so get ready. And unfortunately, I was correct, but that's because I'm a local. I lost um, a family friend to wildfire in 2017. A year later, I nearly lost my brother in paradise. So what we do here is we are hero helpers. We try to get all the, inf all the official information out to the public that we can ASAP, especially evacuation information. We track the fire, we try to see where it's going, we use all manners of tracking, we listen to them live, we use the maps, we use satellites, we track fire history, we look at the time lapse of the cameras, and we have on speed dial former firefighters and especially Captain John Bruno, the retired fire captain of Shasta County, calls us with his two cents. And we can ask a real firefighter um, any kind of question. I am very honored and grateful. Thank you, everybody, for the kind donations that allow us to be ad-free and on the air. And we go 24-7 whenever there is a crisis. So thank you, mods. Thank you, donors. And thank you, viewers. Please hit the like button. Share the stream with anybody you find could use this information. You're on social media or just text them. And uh, we'll be butte strong. We will be butte strong. We'll get through this together. And also, Plume is strong. Tahima is strong. Chas is strong too. California is strong. Thank you, friends. Let's go live.